Welcome to part seven of Understanding the Alps. This section will be about a frequently asked question by pilots flying here with us. What is the fern? In a quick overview of this wind, the diagram on the left basically shows the fern is a wind that blows perpendicular to a mountain range, in our case the Alps. The low being off to the northwest. For a fern effect to occur, it has to have a ridge high enough to trap the air mass so that it doesn't just overflow and the Alps easily qualify for this. The right hand diagram shows what is happening to the air as it gets pushed over the main alpine divide. It shows that the trapped windward side is damp and the lee side is dry, but I'll go into this in more detail very soon. These next synoptics show the run up to the fern. This is the usual weather pattern over the Alps. So as a cold front passes through, the air mass becomes unstable. A high pressure with uh, dry air moves in, cloud base rises, thermals are pretty good and the wind is light and usually from the north, northwest in the beginning. As this high moves east across the Alps, the wind slowly backs west. Conditions around this time are still good, but gets more stable as the warmer air starts to come from the southwest, slowing the thermals down. With the next low, over the west northwest of Europe, a southerly stream will reach the Alps after it has crossed the Mediterranean and gained a lot of humidity. Uh, once the wind switches, it generally gets stronger with the approaching low. A dry, warm, turbulent wind blows on the north side of the Alps. This wind will persist until the next front arrives, restoring a more equal pressure on the north and south side of the Alps. Cloud base will drop and the wind in the valleys will change to a strong damp gust front and after the front passes through a higher will usually build again. So as you can see the whole synoptic situation controls this weather effect on the Alps. However the real culprit for this situation is the main alpine divide or main ridge. This ridge stretches across the whole of the Alps starting in Slovenia and going all the way across to the south of France rising up to nearly 5,000 meters in some places. This ridge has some of Europe's largest peaks in its midst, uh, the Mont Blanc Massif being just one. The blue arrows depict a cool, moist, southerly airflow. As this wet air gets forced up on the south side, it gets stuck and turns into cloud, most likely raining or snowing at altitude. Then this turns into a warm, dry, turbulent wind on the north side. Without this huge ridge, the wet air mass would simply be free to cross the whole of Northern Europe. This view is a shot of this reservoir effect as the high ridge blocks the moist air, causing Stau cloud. This is a classic fern phenomenon. As you can see from this angle, the ridge is blocking the wind and those tendrils coming down are evaporating as the air is much drier on the lee side. These lower clouds are most likely caused by inversions. These powerful wave formations are on the lee side of the main ridge. This was a fern storm in Innsbruck a few years back. The winds reached in excess of 170 km an hour on some mountains. This last shot from February 2004 has not been tampered with. This fern was so powerful that it was full of Saharan dust. It was even picked up on satellite images. The next sequence is uh, to show what happens to the air as it meets this high ridge. The blue arrows show the humid south wind. This is mechanically lifted up the luft side. This then turns to cloud. Stowing in the valleys to the south, you can expect rain here. When the wind is strong, it starts to rotor and tumble just like a normal lee side and blows to the north as a dry, warm wind. Expect high base cumulus here and possibly some very high wave cloud. The thermals could be broken and very unorganized. The cues themselves have a strange raggedy edge to them. Although sometimes this airflow is just a laminar south wind and is soarable if it's not too strong. But only if the air is unstable as thermals help to slow the wind down. Also with an unstable air mass the wind is allowed to go over the alpine divide or main ridge unhindered. However if the air is too stable after the high pressure there could be inversions in the high level. Then this wind is squeezed and accelerated over the main ridge of the Alps at around three to 4,000 meters high. As it tumbles, it creates massive rotor which can extend for 20 to 30 kilometers. Uh, even more dangerous is if the lower inversions break, then this rotor is allowed to run through the valleys. This wind then rotors again as the terrain changes direction. The further away you get from the main ridge, 
the more benign the wave becomes. This is why you can fly on the foothills of the Alps on all but the strongest days. The closer to the main ridge you are, the less predictable the wind becomes. So now let's have a look in more detail what's happening on this ridge and the reason why the fern is dry and warm. As I said before, the moist air is pushed up and forced to condense as the relative humidity is high. As the stale cloud forms, it starts to rain. And as you can see, cloud base here is at around 1600 meters. So the reason why the fern is dry is easy to explain as it's due to most of the moisture being deposited on the Luff side, windward side of the Alpine Divide. The reason why it's warmer at the same altitude in the Lee than in the Luff is a little more complex. It's to do with the difference in saturated and dry adiabatic rates. Physics tells us that dry air will lower by one degree every 100 meters climbed. Saturated air, i.e. in cloud, will only lower by 0.65 degrees per 100 meters. At the height of the mountain tops, the air mass will have lost most of its humidity through precipitation. The sinking on the other side of the mountains and associated warming takes place with the dry adiabatic lapse rate. At 1000 meters on the south side, the temperature is around 21 degrees. At the same altitude on the north side, it's 27 degrees. The air is warmed up during the descent at a rate higher than the cooling during the ascent. This air reaches the plains as a very dry, very warm and very strong wind, the fern. Okay, so what does this mean for paraglider pilots in the real world? Although sailplanes can achieve some hypoxic altitudes in fern wave, it is little use to us as the wind strengths and associated turbulence is far too great. The worrying thing about the fern is not the wind strength itself. Experience has shown me this in the past. The air in the fern is not a laminar airflow as is normal in the Alps, but a gusty twisting rotor that can produce some serious sink, lift and extreme turbulence. It's a little like flying in an out of phase wave. Only the mountains which started this wave are over 3000 meters high. It feels like you are always flying in the lee, which of course you are. The saving grace of the fern is that it's mostly short lived and relatively easy for forecasters to predict. Plus we have several ways of telling if the fern is in the post, uh, mountain stations and nearby lakes. A final word of warning. The fern can break through very quickly. A pressure difference of just four to five hectopascals between the north and the south side of the Alps is enough if the other conditions are in place to produce a squeeze and rotor. Sometimes the wind can even be felt in the valley before it's felt on launch, or between two inversions lower down. These are not ideal situations really. Even a slight shift in wind direction in the high level, or the arrival of a nearby front can produce massive rotor in the valleys. So if there is fern in the forecast, please be careful, and if in doubt, don't fly as it's just not worth it.